Mr. Vikram Nair. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of this bill. These changes are wide-ranging and welcome. Singapore's Penal Code was enacted in 1871, a legacy of the colonial era. It started as a codification of the criminal law for easy administration by colonial officials in far-out territories, many of whom would not be lawyers. While criminal and law uh, in England has not been codified in a single bill, the codification of the criminal law in the Penal Code has always been intended for the criminal law to be easily understood by a wider audience. Even a layperson reading the Penal Code would find the law clearly stated and helpful illustrations provided on how the law was to be applied. This is unlike other pieces of legislation. Of course, the Penal Code has undergone extensive changes over the last century and a half, and this latest set brings the Penal Code up to date with many of the latest developments and crime trends. It also makes important changes to further protect vulnerable victims. In making these changes, the Penal Code has retained the easy-to-understand drafting style that clearly sets out the offences and penalties involved, as well as helpful illustrations. While the Penal Code itself is long, each of the offences is clearly set out and organised, and a layperson should be able to understand the charges against him when charged for any of these offences. In relation to vulnerable persons, this bill makes provision for greater penalties for offences against the following. Domestic workers, vulnerable persons, persons below 14 years, people in intimate relationships, people in close relationships. Uh, intimate relationships refers to um, partners, um, sexual or not, and close relationships includes broader family. Now these are important changes that recognize special vulnerability in these relationships. All involve situations where one person is likely to be dependent on another or in a position of special trust with that person. And the abuse of that special position by committing a crime therefore fully justifies a sterner penalty and sends the right signal. On a related note, though in a different part of the bill, the marital immunity to rape has also been abolished. This was a point that I and others in this house had raised on previous occasions. It has always been, in my view, a quirk of the law when it was argued a man could not rape his wife, even if she did not consent to having sex with him. Some of the reports of husbands abusing wives are particularly heinous, and while they may have involved sex forced through violence, the perpetrator could not be charged for rape, but would often be charged with a lesser charge for the related violence. This was usually unsatisfactory for the victims. This amendment addresses this matter. There is also a series of offences that seem to be aimed at mischief that can have serious consequences. This includes making false reports of dangerous objects, such as declaring there is a bomb in a train when you know there isn't one, causing or contributing to serious fires, and this seems clearly to capture cigarette butts thrown down rubbish chutes that may cause fires. There's also um, criminalization of negligence in respect of uh, things like machineries, tearing down buildings, and even dangerous animals, which is fair because this makes it clear that people of responsibility doing these tasks should take additional care. I also welcome the changes to the court in relation to crimes that have become particularly damaging in the internet age. These include specific offences in relation to voyeurism, the taking of intimate photos or videos of a person without their knowledge, possession of the same, or even gaining access to it. Now, These are broad-ranging powers which criminalise not only the obtaining of such information, but also those who gain access to it. Child pornography is another area that receives special legislative attention, with a wide range of offences covering those who exploit children to provide the material, those who profit from it or distribute it, and those who access it. Mr. Speaker, this is a broad-ranging bill that thoughtfully covers emerging areas in crime and also provides greater protection of vulnerable people. I wholeheartedly support this reform and thank the committee members for their hard work in putting these proposals together.